So one of the questions I get asked the most on my chicken processing and butchering videos is about the plucker itself. And uh, this particular plucker uh, I built with a lot of help from my father-in-law, which is a lot, he's a lot better uh, builder than I am. But essentially all we did is sit down on YouTube and watch a whole bunch of different uh, people that had these and took what we liked from some, changed some things to kind of fit how we thought it worked best. And this is what we came up with. So uh, this is a whiz-bang style design. There's, you can buy the plans. Uh, Whizbangplanet.com, I think, is the is the site. Uh, but we went ahead and just kind of uh, took in from what other people had done, made some modifications to that design, and it works great. Uh, tomorrow's a butchering day, so after I get done kind of walking you through this, we'll run a couple chickens through it, and you can see it in action. Okay, we're going to start with the motor. Um, this particular one, my father-in-law actually had, so I didn't have to buy the motor, which was uh, one thing that did help save a little bit of money. But you can buy these at Freight Harbor. I think they're under $100. Uh, when you are using it, you want to have a bucket or something over it so water's not coming down into your motor. But this particular model um, is a three-quarter horse, and it works really good. Basically, just mounted it right to our, our frame, and uh, it runs, runs the belts to run the main uh, plucking wheel. Okay, this is a look at the belt that runs the wheel. Uh, this big belt here, um, we kind of had to just keep measuring until we got one that actually fit. But the the pulley system was one piece, one of the pieces I did buy from the Whizbang people that uh, come up with came up with this design. Uh, the other two things is there's a block underneath there, and then there's one up in the board above it. So they've got basically a bearing so it, it uh, rotates real smooth and spins nicely. One of the other items I purchased um, along with the, the bigger wheel was this little guy um, that comes, it was supposed to be a belt tensioner and it's actually on here backwards because the way it's designed it's actually supposed to put pressure pulling towards the, on the belt with a spring behind it but I just found once everything gets wet it basically starts slipping so um, I don't know, it, I, w I wouldn't say that that's necessary. The way actually we have it kind of jimmy rigged here is actually works better. We just have a piece of PVC that runs down and then it's in behind that block and so we can by lifting or raising this pole it creates less or more tension and that way as things either get wet or um, start slowing down you can adjust it without having to mess with the belt at all. So this is probably one of the biggest uh, kind of series of things that are the biggest differences from what you would get if you bought the plans. Um, the first thing is, instead of cutting the bottom out, a lot of the designs, they'll cut the whole bottom of the barrel off and all the feathers and everything will fall out. Uh, that just seems really messy to me. So what we did is on our feather plate, we just inverted two fingers. They're going down. I'll show you the top here in a minute. But when this spins, it rakes around. And then essentially all those feathers come down the chute and we've got a bucket with holes to catch them. So that just makes it a lot uh, less of a, a mess, basically, as all that feather and uh, water and stuff is being sprayed everywhere, kind of contains it and uh, makes cleanup a little bit easier. Okay, look on the inside is where all your plucking fingers will go. Um, basically the tubs are pretty standard, you know, a lot of times you can find these for free or, you know, 10 bucks, you know, there's all kinds of things that get shipped in these and they're pretty easy if you just take a little time to find them. But uh, the fingers are a little different story, they're a little bit harder to find and what I found that was the most inexpensive uh, way to get them was on eBay. I think you can buy them in lots of a hundred and this one took about a hundred uh, 120 total with all the side ones. Uh, I did basically uh, two rows on the bottom and then vertical rows and these are just to keep your bird from rising in the plucker and with those we just you know you drill holes through and then you got to pull them through which will make your fingers very sore by the time you're done uh, getting those all put through. The, the bottom piece is the feather plate. This is another item you can buy. Uh, I did not. I actually uh, actually uh, drilled all the holes in this one. Didn't really go with the set pattern, and it seems to work fine. I just kind of went every other rung, splitting the difference, and it seemed to work out. And the last piece, which you really can't see, is the drive axle. I did buy that piece uh, just because it fits everything else, and it basically just bolts right onto the plate and then makes this spin. The plumbing part of this is pretty simple. All it is is a black line that I've got uh, clamped on uh, there along the edge of the, the barrel. And all I did is come in with the drill bit and drill little holes underneath it. 
So it sprays. You can just do it with a hose too if you don't want to mess with that. We, I, we did that when we first started and then I added this later, but it's pretty simple. I just got a quick connect up here, turn the water on, and it's spraying uh, while your bird's spinning. Okay, the last of the mechanical stuff is just uh, how you turn it on. It just has a single switch. It's got an old extension cord and the other wire runs down the motor. So it's just on. And off to make it run. Um, as far as the structure of the actual plucker, it's just framed with two by fours. You're just basically trying to make your barrel fit and have it so it has a, a platform for your main rod to run through. Mine also has wheels on it. Though I wish I'd bought better ones and I probably will replace those someday. But it gets it around pretty good. So anyway, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run some chickens through it and show it in action. So we always take the legs off them. It seems like they get less broken bones that way. Start it. Most of them take about 15 seconds. You'll end up with a couple extra feathers here and there. But for the most part, it gets them clean. Okay, so a little bit of hand picking. Usually there'll be a few feathers around the tail and the wings. Uh, I get asked also a lot about damage. The only thing that really usually happens is sometimes this little flipper joint will break, which in my opinion really doesn't matter that much. So uh, anyway, that's what they look like when they're all uh, done and kind of finished hand picked. So now that we've got a few chickens run through, uh, it's time to kind of get uh, cracking on this project and get these guys processed. But hopefully it was helpful, kind of the walkthrough. Uh, I can't recommend enough if you raise your own chickens. Uh, this unit altogether cost me around $300 to put together, and it's been worth every penny. Uh, I think, in fact, if you buy everything brand new um, and you didn't have anything, you can make one for around $700. But uh, even at that price, it, it, it's a good deal for. Anyone who's ever plucked their own chickens by hand, um, you probably know what I'm talking about. So anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed it. As always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.